Hey everybody, CammieBaker.com here. We are fabulous, fierce, and on fire. And I'm going to start recording on my Zoom because we've got Billy the coach and we don't want to miss another minute. So let me get recording. Awesome. We are recording CammieBaker.com. Fabulous, fierce, and on fire. Fridays with friends featuring Billy the coach. Billy and I were introduced via a mutual acquaintance not very long ago, but we had immediate rapport immediate and sat down and had coffee and when I realized what Billy brings to the table I said Billy you got to get in front of my peeps they got to see some they, they, they got to see some of Billy so Billy share with everybody a little bit first of all about how you got your name because everybody's gonna ask that question and then a little bit about uh, what you're all about and who you serve and, and what your message and madness is hey thank you Jamie great to be here and I uh... Uh, right back at you. I love your energy, love your enthusiasm. Uh, the root word enthusiasm comes from the God within. So um, great to share that with you and great to be here with you today. So um, my name is Billy Sheehan. The company is Billy the Coach. Uh, that name came to me by way of a client. Confidentiality is key, but I can assure you, you would know who this person was that <laughs> kind of labeled me Billy the Coach. So uh, that's, uh, that's been something that stuck around a long time and people, probably more people call me BTC now than by my name. So um, I'm an executive health strategist. I basically help high performing executives avoid becoming the richest guy in the graveyard. I help them avoid becoming the unhappiest guy in rehab. And uh, what we've learned today as we go into the 21st century, destroying one's health uh, as a means of growing your business makes no sense whatsoever. So I work with people to re-engineer what they appear to be a conflict between their personal health and their professional growth. There really is no conflict, it's just conjured up in their head. But I help them um, re-engineer that to the benefit of them, their future, their company, and their customers. Re-engineer is a great word because right now we are in Mercury in retrograde. And I don't know if you keep up with any of that stuff, but I am re-evaluating, reconsidering, reintroducing, re-re-re, re-all that stuff. So tell us how you do that with folks because I know you work with big companies. You work with, with the whole company, with, with individual executives, et cetera, on a really high investment level too. So talk to us about what that looks like. Like when you sit down with somebody and you want to keep them out of the graveyard or out of the rehab, what, how does that start? Well, it starts with a pretty thorough interview process. Um, what I've learned over the years is to uh, confine my work to people who are ready. Every human being possesses extraordinary amounts of transformational resources, yet not everyone is prepared to acknowledge that not everyone is prepared at any given time to, to utilize those to their advantage. So I really want to make sure that they are open to new ideas, that they are that they're on board with the idea. There's a great saying, change occurs when the pain of the status quo exceeds the pain of change. Mm. And when an individual is truly ready to change, when they move from talking about what they want to what they must have, that's where we become a very powerful team. Um, they put the benefit of the doubt in me, and I put the benefit of the doubt in them. We form a team which is comprised of the client and Billy the coach, and I back up the statement that I will provide them with the most impactful educational experience of their adult life. Wow. I, you know, I love how the different sayings I've heard over the years come about again in a different way. We used to say in network marketing, everyone is, w what you need is willingness and capability. Willingness and capability for any change, and in this case, transformation. So anyone's capable, but are they willing? Are they willing to actually take it on? And I love that you say that because it's so true, you know, for people that I work with, you know, when I'm teaching people about cause marketing and, and how to have influence when they walk into a room and how to have impact in the community and how to make more income by doing all of that together and rolling it into cause marketing, anyone's capable of it, but are they willing? Are they willing to be coachable? And like you said, is the pain of what they're losing out on, in your case, 
um, health, productivity. Um, maybe they're they're having other you know drinking issues or whatever because they're just so unhealthy. And for me, you know, are they are they tired of networking in a way that's not bringing them any business? Are they wanting to live into their purpose and their passion, but they don't know how to partner it with their profession? You know, so when I find some, everybody has to be willing, Billy. That's so true. Willing, willing, willing. So talk about what it looks like. I mean, do people work with you for three months, six months, for a year? How long does it normally take for you to help them really get their head around how to transform? Yeah, so the bulk of my work is done in executive coaching, and the bulk of that work is done by way of phone. If myself and the client decide that we're a good fit, good match, good timing, then we commit to a three-month scope of work. Now, sometimes it might go three months, it might go four months because these are busy people, they travel, they get uh, surprises pop up, same for me. And um, we begin a process of um, weekly calls, which range typically about 45 minutes uh, per week. And there is unlimited phone contact if they want it, unlimited email contact. Um, my goal is to develop another raving fan of the Billy the Coach process. And, and really, Kimmy, what I do, these are very smart people. These people have everything they need. I'm not giving them anything they lack. I'm simply revealing what they possess. And through the process, it's, um, it's really eye-opening um, to watch these very smart, very motivated people get to the point where they say my favorite comment of all you know something billy i never thought of that before i love that and too then I, <laughs> I know i'm doing my job i love that too i love when somebody says you know I never thought about it like that before so the yeah. people that you're working with are really high level executives a lot of people who are watching this right now may not quite be to that level but what can they do what can we do um, 5, 10, 20 years before we would have gotten to a place where we needed to work with Billy the Coach. In other words, how can we be healthier and more health conscious now to avoid having one foot in the grave and one foot in rehab? <laughs> well, let me answer first with one of my favorite sayings by Helen Keller. There is no higher form of blindness than those with sight but without vision. Mm. So my first comment would be to these, I don't know, pre-executive uh, people is to understand that your path is determined from within. We are not creatures of external forces. We are creatures of internal decisions. And the sooner you can get your focus on who you are, what you want to do, where you want to be, what you want to accomplish, the sooner that journey can begin. Just this morning, Kimmy, I was talking to a client and we were both laughing. She is a very high executive in a medical device company. And I said, can you imagine if we had this stuff in our heads when we were 18? It wouldn't be a fair fight. It would be just the, the root of a much, much different situation. The second thing, the second thing, Tammy, Tammy is that um, I would say to people to Begin doing some homework on the theory, understanding time in a different way. The number one reason why people say they don't exercise in the United States is that they don't have enough time. Not only is this invalid and false, it's actually impossible. It's impossible because every single living human being that ever walked the face of the earth had the same amount of time. Everyone. There's no such thing as more time or less time. There is a big thing called priority. So true. You and I have decided we chose to put a high priority on being on this call today. And once you understand that everything in your life is determined not by the unchangeable past, not by the unpredictable future, everything in your life is determined by the decision you make right now. Then you've lit the fuse. Now you're on your way. I love that. And and whatever we're living in right now, this moment of you and I right now is actually old news. 
Like this is something we created a long time ago and stepped into it right now. So whatever you're doing right now, right in this very moment, is what's going to dictate what happens in the future. Wouldn't you agree that right now this is kind of old news and let's, let's be more focused on, you know, what are we going to do in the future to, to be able to, uh, to, to grow and learn? Well, Cammy, knowing you and having spent a little bit of time together, you and I could go so deep into the weeds on this topic, it would be unfair to our um, audience right now. Um, what I do with my clients, by the way, when those clients are done with the that three to four month scope of work in the executive coaching program, um, they have the option of continuing the coach-client relationship. And the vast majority of the people that I work with choose that option i have people that i've worked with i think my longest running client is probably over 15 years wow and um so we call it the, the whole program is based on the concept of behavioral conditioning just as i could take anyone into a gym and condition them physically billy the coach program is about conditioning us mentally and what we're trying to do is move people from one big group to another the first group is the people that have chosen to be in command of the way they think. The other much larger group is at the mercy of the way they think. Mm -hmm. And when you can make that transition, accept responsibility for where you are, acknowledge the extraordinary power of the decision you can make right now, everything in your life will change. It's impossible for it not to. I love that. I love taking responsibility. I've had that conversation a couple of times this week. And for me, when I take responsibility and ownership for everything, when I was in the throes of alcoholism, if I pointed and blamed at other people and circumstances, like you said, nothing outside of you is what's creating you. It's, it's from the inside out. When I was able to say, you know what, this is something, I've got to own this. I've got to take responsibility for this. I've got to take responsibility for my own actions. There's actually a lot of power in this. Like, oh, okay. Well, if I've created this mess, I can also create something so wonderful. And it's just so empowering to take responsibility. And, and uh, speak to us on that. How, what's, what are some steps people can take to take responsibility? Well, for, first of all, Kimmy, let me say that I know we've talked a little bit, but I don't know you all that well. And I'm just learning about that you might have had some challenges with, with alcohol. Kimmy, I love being right about these things. Because here I am on the phone, on this call, with an intelligent, vibrant, enthusiastic individual who proves everything that I just said. We are not what we did in the past. That's not true. We are what we choose right now. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing that I try and reinforce with my clients. One client comes to mind, the first thing this individual does is tell me how much weight they've lost since the last time we spoke. And the very next thing I tell him is, look, would you just give yourself permission to be free of a person with a weight problem? Let it go. Deepak Chopra likes to say that which we resist will persist. Mm. It's true because if we constantly resist being what we want, what we want to change, that's what gives it energy. That's what gives it life. The whole process to any solution, personal, professional, mental, physical, starts with a different frame of mind. As Einstein said, you can't solve a problem with the same mindset that created it. Isn't that the truth? And, you know, I, I, I being a part of different 12-step organizations over the years, I personally don't like to say to the universe, my name is and I'm A. If it's something that doesn't serve me in the moment and make me inspired and feel fabulous, fierce, and on fire. So, you know, I, I, I resist claiming to the universe what I used to be or, or where I, the, 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 the characteristics and the habits and the traits that I used to have. I prefer to claim who I am now and who I want to be in the future. Now, Billy, I know that you work with, uh, you know, executives and, and CEOs and high-level folks, but I also know that you are wanting to do more, um, like, physical hands-on, get together with people. You and I have talked about maybe collaborating on something, you know, here in the New England marketplace. Talk about some of that stuff. Like, what is your vision for actually bringing a big group of people together, and, and, and what kind of transformation would we have? together in that that day or weekend yeah so 
So, Carrie, what I'd like to do, what I'm going to do, is create an opportunity for people to come and learn this methodology. Billy, what is behavioral conditioning? What does it mean? What is the difference between being in the command of the way I think rather than being at the mercy of the way I think? So my goal is to create an opportunity for people to come to an event. And just on that point right there, uh, Kimmy, I'm a big believer that people are really moving away from this whole social media thing. What we're doing here is great. But it will never replace that the induction fields that we share when we occupy the same space. I want to work with people. I want to look them in the eye. I want them to see me, not with sight, but with vision. Mm. I want them to see the reflection of what they can be because I am exactly as they are and they are as exactly as I am. And I want people to come and experience this transformative process where you can become behaviorally powerful rather than behaviorally vulnerable. I That's love that. the general aspect of it. I love that. I was just writing that down, sight versus vision. You know, I, I get these little, I love... I love doing Fabulous Fierce and on fire because I get to interview and be with people whose expertise, I always get that little pearl and that little something that I can steal and stick into my stuff too. And, you know, as to your point, I don't know if social media is going away, but what I do know is people want experience. They don't want a workshop. They don't want training. They don't want PowerPoint. They want an experience. And I feel the same way. You know, getting together this way is better than just being email or on the phone because at least we can see each other and feel that energy. But there is nothing better than hand to hand, belly to belly, face to face combat. Like getting in there. Like when you and I met at Panera's that day. There's nothing better than getting your hands on somebody and just feeling their energy because I know for me, Wow, the ideas start flowing. I had a, a meeting this morning with a woman from a chamber of commerce locally. You know, when I get together with somebody and the ideas start flowing, just as you said a little bit earlier, they see things like, I never thought of that. I know. I know. That's yeah, why we're together. I think, I think the social media technology thing is it's wonderful, obviously. But what we're doing here is great. But people are looking for this. Uh-huh. I agree. That's what they want. They, they, they want to be a part of something. And, you know... Again, to, to not attach accountability to this process would be disingenuous on my part. And frankly, if an individual is unwilling to dedicate a few hours to participating in an experience, this is a very, very strong indicator that they are still anchored to what they want to, what they've been, and they're not ready to let that go. So what they can be can displace what they were. Well, I agree, and, and our kind of people, our tribes are the people who want to get fa- face-to-face, and they're okay getting uncomfortable. Being being comfortable getting uncomfortable, I did a, a, a TV appearance about a month ago. We talked about the word failure, how, you know, listen, if you're not failing, shame on you because you're not trying. If you're, if you're always in your comfort zone, shame. I'm not impressed. Oh, I don't fall down when I skate. Oh, I never get hung up on the phone. You're not getting, you're not getting hung up on the phone because you're not picking up the phone and using it. You're not using it I enough. Think a, I think a lot of that, uh, you see this, um, you know, I know some great millennials, Cammy, but millennials and talking to business owners, people that are trying to fill important positions, they're feeling the pain of that right now. Because a lot of these, a lot of these young people, um, they've grown up in a very oblique sort of environment where everybody gets a trophy just because you showed up. Everybody gets a juice box because we're all special. <laughs> and once you get into the job market, they don't take the one job with six candidates and divide it six ways. There's going to be one winner, and there's going to be five losers, and. What we haven't, I don't think, stressed enough is what you were just saying. If you're not failing, you're not trying hard enough. If you're not getting rejected from certain jobs, you're not reaching high enough to your full capacity. I couldn't agree more. Well, when I'm talking to people about about networking and, and, and business cards and being rejected or being hung up on or being talked, when somebody says to me, well, 
I've never been hung up on or I've never been told to F off or whatever. So well, I said, well, shame on you. That means you're not trying hard enough. You know, I, I just started working with a woman in New York City who's an, who's, uh, an author and she's an aspiring uh, speaker. And I said, well, how many networking events have you been to? And she thought about it. She contemplated. She said, I've been to a lot. I said, how many? She said, I've been to at least 20 or 30. I said, 20 or 30? I've been to thousands. I've been to 20 or 30 in a week. Girl, we got to get you out there. We got to get you failing forward fast. That's one of my favorite books is John Maxwell, Failing Forward. I haven't read it in years, but when I did read it, I remember him having actual exercises in it, me actually taking my pen and actually doing the exercises in the book because it was just so um, powerful for me at the time to, to talk about failing forward. Billy, we are right at about 30 minutes of being together, and it's you and I could sit and chat for hours, as you know. Absolutely. And we are definitely going to get together and do some brainstorming. Let's leave the folks with, um, you know, with some kind of inspiration, something that they can do right now in the moment, something that you share with people. Uh, you know, when you get interviewed, what's that one thing that people can do right now? To What's the, the, the book they can read, the seminar you recommend, that practice they can do? What's some yummy y- nugget that they can leave? and do right now good well first of all let me recommend a book that a client recommended to me it's called I can see clearly now by dr. Wayne Dyer Ah. fabulous book and the one BTC tip that I would give people is to understand this incredibly powerful reality every single thing in your life happened in the present moment When you went to the first grade, when you got uh, your first car, when you graduated from school, Cammy, when we got on this call, it was in the present moment. Strangely enough, I'm speaking these words in the present moment. Give yourself the gift of understanding the shortest road to mastering life is to learn to master the moment. Be good at what you're doing now. Expect nothing but excellence from what you're doing in the moment. And everything that flows from there will be to your advantage. Mm-hmm. Words of Wisdom to Live By by Billy the Coach, BTC. <laughs> I can hear music in the background. Words of Wisdom to Live By by BTC. You are a pleasure. You are a joy. You are an inspiration. You You are yummy. And I'm so grateful to actually, I'm going to give him a shout out, Tim Tim Burke. Tim Burke is a networking genius that I met out at a, a Friends of Kevin event on a snowy night when only about five of us showed up. Just goes to show it's about quality, not quantity, because since there were only five of us there, we had some quality time. He said, have you heard of Billy the Coach? I said, no, I haven't. Next thing you know, Billy and I are on the phone. I'm throwing explicatives at Billy, and we're just yucking it up and going to Panera's. And so I just honor you for your time. I honor everybody else's time for sitting in with us. And I will put on the screen here how to get in touch with Billy, um, both through uh, Facebook and, and however else you want to get a hold of him. Would you like to share any of your contact information? Yeah, people can reach me. Uh, they can reach me at 603-580-4708. They can reach me through email at BTC, Billy the Coach, BTC at BillyTheCoach.com. And they can see more of the sorted details at BillyTheCoach.com. Nice. And I love that you threw your phone number out there. I do the same thing, and people are horrified. They're like, Cammy, you throw your number out. What if some weird guys are calling you? Or what if people, it's like, look, people aren't going to call you. They're so afraid of the phone. It's unbelievable. But here's my number, because if you want to call, that's we're business people. Isn't it amazing? You go on LinkedIn, you go on these different websites, and people don't have a phone number, and you can't get a hold of them. I don't know how people do business. So call Billy if you want some inspiration. It's a new day out there. New day, new rules, new opportunities. Absolutely, my friend. Let's follow up next week. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.